thank you for being here today. Uh, yes, I came to San Francisco because I was pursuing the best possible training, and everyone will tell me UCSF, UCSF, that's the, the place you, you want to go. Uh, and I am very grateful for the, all the opportunities by my mentors and teachers, in, you know, the, the doctors, the nurses, the social workers, because uh, you're helping us become better, better doctors, more competent uh, physicians. I want to tell you two, uh, two interesting results, two interesting pieces of data in, in, in two uh, uh, lines of research that we're pursuing at the clinical tri uh, trials team here at the MAC. Um, one of them has to do with amyloid. Amyloid is one of these big targets that we have identified that uh, we know um, are involved in, in uh, the symptoms in, in, in uh, the disease of uh, the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Um, we don't know why amyloid uh, accumulates in the brain, but we know that once it's in the brain, it contributes to this spiral of degeneration and, and uh, contributes to the symptoms. So we have been enrolling patients for a big clinical trial, multi-center uh, all over the world, um, uh, recruit patients to test the effects of uh, an anti-amyloid uh, uh, compound or medication. It's an antibody called aducanumab. Aducanumab um, targets, uh, is, is given through the vein and goes to the brain, crosses the blood-brain barrier and reaches the brain, it reaches amyloid and it helps to clear amyloid out of the brain. And the expectation, the original hypothesis was, if we can clear amyloid uh, of the brain, maybe the, that spiral of degeneration that is occurring in the brain could be stopped or interrupted, and maybe the, the disease will not progress further. So uh, what I'll show you here is two um, uh, images with um, amyloid in the brain in a patient. All that red uh, stuff that you see there is um, a tracer that identifies amyloid. So this, in this case, the brains have a lot of amyloid. And you see amyloid is all over the brain, you know, in the front of the brain, but also in the back. Um, and then if you follow that person over time, you know, one year later, the amyloid kind of doesn't change, it stays the same, but we know that symptoms progress with time. So what, did, uh, what this study did uh, with aducanumab was we, we uh, were giving uh, some, some uh, patients uh, the antibody and the preliminary data show that when you give a small dose of aducanumab uh, to a patient and you follow that patient over a year, there is a clearance of amyloid, just as expected. And if you increase the dose, the clearance is even further, you know, the, the six milligram dose per kilogram was even better at clearing the amyloid compared to, to baseline. And even a higher dose was even more effective. So it, according, or based on the hypothesis, this, is, uh, uh, this follows the, the, what was predicted, that the amyloid uh, antibody or aducanumab would be able to clear uh, the matter from the brain. But you, you can tell me, well, yeah, Doc, but, but you're trying to sell me this kind of Rogaine commercial, the before and after, but what, the, what does that matter? What, does that really make a change? And, I was, I was very excited to see the preliminary data for the first time. It was probably two years ago. But for the first time, uh, these changes in the brain correlate with changes in cognition, meaning when they tested uh, how the uh, cognition changed over time for these patients, it actually mattered a lot. There was a big correlation. And let me, let me show you what you through, so through this data. And just bear with me uh, a little bit here. So this, this graph is showing the level of impairment on this axis here. So zero means normal cognition, no impairment, and 2.5 means more impairment or more memory loss, more uh, cognitive problems. And on this, uh, uh, on this side here, you have different groups of different uh, treatment groups. The, the yellow bar means placebo. Mean, uh, they, these patients with Alzheimer's disease or mild cognitive impairment didn't receive any treatment. In each one of these other uh, groups receive different doses that you saw before in the other graph. But as you see, uh, you know, around week 26 uh, of the study, more or less all of them had uh, between 0.5 and 1 level of impairment, so low impairment. And what you would expect is that those patients not receiving any drug, they will progress further, you know, a uh, few months later. Versus patients not uh, receiving the drug will probably stay about the same. That will be that will make sense. 
and that was what uh, we were, um, was tried to, um, to demonstrate it. And, and that's what, exactly what it happened. Those patients that didn't receive the medication progressed, you know, after a few months, and they were more impaired. But there was a dose response effect on uh, the cognition with aducanumab. And this was, this is the first time that with an antibody like this, after you know 20 or 30 years of work, that we see an antibody that shows an effect like this. And there was there was a key here. The the, the key observation was that uh, uh, the secret was to wait a little bit longer to treat people for a little bit longer because many other. Uh, um, a trial with other antibodies will test people only for maybe six months or a year at the most, but these studies now are going into treating for, for longer periods of time. And also, uh, seems like aducanumab is a better antibody. It creates less inflammation as a side effect, it's more uh, um, uh, specific in type in amyloid. So, right now, we are at the, at the uh, at the MAC here at our center, we are recruiting, and this is data, by the way, from, from a phase one trial, but we are currently re recruiting uh, patients to be treated with aducanumab in a, in a placebo controlled tri uh, trial, um, and uh, this is a, an international effort. We're one of the uh, many centers uh, around the world recruiting patients, and in February of this year, we reach our 50% uh, re recruitment, and we hope that for the next year or maybe a couple of years, we'll, we'll continue recruiting more patients. Um, and the idea is to test whether this preliminary data can be replicated in this larger study with a larger number of people. And I, we are all very, very excited about these findings, uh, and we hope that this will, this will contribute a little bit uh, to providing uh, a treatment. But the other piece of uh, work that I want to show you, it has to do with tau. And I want you, if you remember the pictures I showed you at the very beginning, the amyloid is all over the place in the brain. And uh, in fact, there are a lot of people with that who, by just by age, can have some amyloid in the brain, but don't necessarily have symptoms. But tau is different because tau really correlates <laughs> Uh, uh, with this, the amount of symptoms that someone may have. So it makes even more sense to try to clear tau out of the brain. And, and just to give you an example, we, we have generated data that has contributed to some of these. These are, again, other pictures of the brain uh, showing tau. And in this case, I actually can tell you, can point out here, that in this in normal controls, there's actually not a lot of tau accumulation. Uh, the, the blue part means there's no tau, it's a cold area, there's no, uh, no accumulation of tau. But in someone with Alzheimer's disease, there's a, actually a lot of tau accumulated in these key regions. And, and this is the important part. This, for example, these are the memory regions in Alzheimer's, in the brain. And in Alzheimer's disease, they have a lot of tau accumulation. There's a lot of degeneration in those areas. And that correlates really well with the, the beginning of Alzheimer's disease, that uh, people start having mild, mild memory problems. Um, so there's a big correlation between tau and the symptoms, and for us, it makes more sense to actually pursue tau uh, to be clear out of the brain. And this makes sense also for other diseases um, in the frontal temporal dementia spectrum. For example, progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP. Uh, if, if we know that tau it also accumulates in very key strategic regions that are important for PSP. And you see the difference, for example, in Alzheimer's disease, the accumulation of tau is in these regions over here, the, the size of the brain, the temporal cortices, versus in PSV, it's in kind of these centers that control movement. So it makes a lot of sense. And fortunately, we have now access to antibodies that can bind tau and can hopefully clear tau out of the brain. And we are running a, a PSP trial, or a, a trial with a, with a tau antibody that's uh, um, uh, is been tested in a phase one a study, meaning it's uh, a, an initial phase study and the goal is to test uh, or make sure that the antibody is safe. But we hope that in the next few uh, years we'll have uh, other studies, larger studies to test efficacy if everything uh, goes well. And we're starting with PSP, we also expect that maybe in the future we'll have uh, trials that uh, can be used in Alzheimer's disease patients. So 
we are very excited and there is no way, no way uh, for us to make progress without your participation, and participation of patients. So uh, on behalf of all our center, all the, the trial team, I want to thank you for your participation with us. This is a team effort uh, and uh, we value your courage, we value your time. And also we, we are grateful for all the scientists that work hard in the labs to give us ideas so we can try to implement them. And I'll be happy to answer some questions in the Q&A. Thank you so much.